Tradition is just peer pressure from those no longer with us. At a handful of the most well-known schools across the country, it means more than anything any apparel company wants to do for clicks, never mind wins. In this episode, we'll take a look at a handful of schools whose threads look the same when your father watched them play and your grandfather too. Threads is presented by Mercedes-Benz. With certain schools, just like your family members and their favorite pieces of furniture in the living room, you just know them as soon as you see them. There are some staples that any self-respecting college football fan can identify, such as the Iowa Hawkeyes with their black and gold borrowed from the Steelers, the USC Trojans with their cardinal and gold, and maybe throw in Nebraska's classic Big Red, even though they're a volleyball school now, kiddos. But there are four in particular that you don't even need to be a sports fan to know. Be it through football, pop culture, scandal, or whatever, their school names are conjured at first sight. In alphabetical order, we'll start with Alabama. From Bear Bryant and his houndstooth style that has taken over the campus ever since, to Forrest Gump scoring touchdowns, and even my man Denzel Washington manning the con during a vicious submarine battle, when you think of Saturday in the South, Tuscaloosa is at the top of the list. They've been wearing the crimson and white since the 1800s, and in the modern helmet era, their look is unwavering. Crimson helmet, white number, gray face mask. That's it, that's the list. In 2006, they went absolutely wild, letting their hair down and adding a houndstooth collar to their jerseys. Even with their pro combat kits, typically an audaciously overdone affair, the big changes were described by AL.com as, quote, an American flag on the right shoulder pad and faint houndstooth pattern inside the front numbers, end quote. Party on. You can't blame Alabama, but it's unfortunate because they have so many cool options. That script A that their baseball team wears is fantastic. And who passes up a chance to put an elephant on anything? One origin story for that, from a newspaper writer, of course, who in 1930 wrote of an Alabama versus Mississippi game, quote, some excited fan in the stands bellowed, hold your horses, the elephants are coming, and outstamped this Alabama varsity, end quote. They were known as the red elephants after that, but it mostly stuck around in logo form. Shouts to their mascot, Big Al. Criminally underrated with that trunk. Next up is Penn State, home of the Nittany Lions in Happy Valley, Pennsylvania. Some way, somehow, their look is somehow even more basic than Alabama's, even with less color. Though it wasn't always that way. Originally, from 1887 to 1890, Penn State's colors were dark pink and black. That changed in March of 90, in part because their baseball team was getting dragged by opponents for their look on the field. But now, it's no color, just a stripe, and no number on the helmet. The raucous whiteouts at Beaver Stadium have become a thing of legend in the last 20 years, which stands in stark contrast to people learning about the importance of Penn State football through their disgraced former head coach, the late Joe Paterno. What's most mind-boggling about Penn State is that they have multiple logos that they could deploy for their helmets as alternates or, God forbid, just regular use. There's the 2D Nittly Lion, which is the most popular. There's the Stately Lion. And there's also the My Soul is So Hollow You Can See Right Through Me logo, which for spooky season is extremely scary. But overall, it's a great look. And even when they switch it up, all they do is look like Alabama and put numbers on the helmets. I guess we can all dream. Moving further west to South Bend, we've got Notre Dame. The Fighting Irish, with their famous campus landmarks, are easily the most well-known program in America. Their golden domes have been shining across the landscape of college football since forever. But even for a school that's as traditional as the Irish, they've got a history of alternates more electric than the rest of these teams will ever get. Of course, their green jerseys probably deserve their own episode, but we've got our friend Ryan McGee to handle that. In 2016, perhaps because of their opponent, some unis that looked like they could have been armies. In 2011, they went with an actual shamrock on the helmet, something I personally would love to see more of. 2012 was probably their most bizarre look, a sort of Jekyll and Hyde deal that involved a big navy stripe that spanned the length of their helmets and pants. Colors and school aside, quite the look. 2013 vs Arizona State was an all-time alternate uni matchup, but my personal favorite of theirs comes from the 2018 game against Syracuse at Yankee Stadium. They wore pinstripes, and they made incredible hype videos riding the subway in full uniform. Just another normal Tuesday on the D-Train. 
Finally, we come to Texas, where they sing songs that are questionable after games and let off a cannon so loud after TDs that even if you know it's coming, it'll scare the absolute mess out of you. Trust me, I've seen it with my own eyes. Understandable in a place where actual Texas Longhorns roam, they got their name from a common source, sports writers. And like many schools mentioned in this series, they got some of their colors after some random general store sold its overstock of bright orange and white ribbons to students. The orange darkened to its famed burnt shade as a means of differentiating from other schools who'd adopted the same color combo. Thing is, the Longhorn silhouette on their white helmets is genuinely one of the best in college sports. They'll occasionally throw a number, phrase, or patch between the horns, but it's always simple and elegant. And that won't be changing anytime soon as far as school officials are concerned. Earlier this year, Texas AD Chris Del Conte went public with his plans to stay simple despite pleas from the kids to actually update their outfits for once. As long as I'm working for you uh, and I work at the University of Texas, let me tell you, there's two colors, burn orange and white. If God wanted a sunset, he would have made it purple, green, yellow, black, red, he made it orange. When the sunrise, it's burn orange, it's perfect. We'll see what happens once the college football playoff comes around, but either way, you can bank on tradition and continuing to guide the nation's most notable teams. This episode of Threads is presented by Mercedes-Benz. The vehicles are all electric. The feeling is all Mercedes.